All right, this is the last video on scene setup, and in it we're going to point out properties and policies for proper placement of peeps. Remember that awesome spoon I was talking about? Yeah, in the cauldron folder, which you should already have selected, you'll see the magic spoon object. Just drag it and drop it in, front and center, and click OK on the menu that comes up. Now we're finally going to use those positional buttons in the top right that I mentioned way back in the first video to get the spoon realistically put in the cauldron. As a quick overview, when you select an object, a ring will show up around it. The default button, which is selected by default, uh, lets us move objects all around by clicking on the object, or spinning it in circles by clicking on the ring and turning that. The rotation button, which is the second button, gives us more rings to spin and flip the object in all three dimensions. The, the translation button, the third button, gives us three arrows, which are mostly good for clicking on to move an object up and down. Primarily, we use the top one. Finally, the resize button lets us make objects really big or really small. Anyway, whenever you make a mistake, which I definitely did by resizing all my objects, you can just hit undo around the positional buttons or handle styles until things look like how we want them to. To put the spoon in the pot, we'll take three steps. First, select the rotation handle. And then click the top ring to turn the spoon so that it's tilted like it would be if it were sitting in the cauldron with the handle, you know, sort of pointing out to the side. Then, select the translation button, the third one, and drag the up arrow until the spoon's kind of in line with the cauldron with the handle sticking out a little bit above it. Finally, click default, and then click the spoon, and drag it over to the side until it looks realistically placed in the cauldron. Woo! All those steps can be kind of confusing, but that's okay, because last but not least, we're going to add in our dragon. Click where it says Fantasy above where it says New Cauldron, and that will take us back to the list of fantasy objects. Now click Baby Dragon, and you'll see all the different colors that you can select from. I'll choose the pink one, because pink is awesome, and drag him in front and to the left of my witch. But hold up. We want the witch to summon the dragon, so the dragon can't be visible from the start. We have to make him invisible. So click on your dragon, or if it's already selected, don't. And then look over to the details pane on the right. There's one drop-down menu called Opacity. If we set this to, say, 0.5, the dragon will become half-translucent. If we set it to 0, the dragon will be invisible. Now in the top left of the scene view, we can see an optic tree in which we can see that the baby dragon is still there, even though he's invisible. Well, that's all that's required for scene setup, but if you have additional time on your hands, I recommend adding in more scenery to make our world way cooler. I spent a lot of time adding in background objects, and I ended up with this scene here. It was great practice for adding in new objects. Get creative, yo! Just remember not to drop any objects where our dragon is, or else when he reappears, they'll take up the same space. So in the next video, we're going to actually program stuff. Get ready, because this is where stuff gets fun. Save your world for now, under File, Save.